presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence the Lord is in this place. In the midst of his children, the Lord said he would be. It doesn't take very many. It can be just two or three. And I feel that same sweet spirit that I felt of times before. Surely I can say I've been with the Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ, your Son, by shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. 
even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man, so shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not told, been told, shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we are healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shears, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood, but the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Father, I put my
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to, to God. God. Please remain seated for the proclamation of the Passion. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley. There was a garden there and he and his disciples entered it. The place was familiar to Judas as well, the one who was to hand him over, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. Judas took the cohort as well as police supplied by the chief priests and the Pharisees and came there with lantern, lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, aware of all that would happen to him, stepped forward and said to them, Who is it you want? Jesus, the Nazarene. I am he. Now Judas, the one who was to hand him over, was right there with them. As Jesus said to them, I am he, they retreated slightly and fell to the ground. Jesus put the question to them again. Who is it you want? Jesus, the Nazarene. I have told you, I am he. If I am the one you want, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said, I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the slave of the high priest, severing his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. At that, Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in the sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? Then the soldiers of the cohort, their tribune, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. They led him first to Annas, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had proposed to the Jews the advantage of having one man die for the people. Simon Peter, in company with another disciple, kept following Jesus closely. This disciple, who was known to the high priest, stayed with Jesus as far as the high priest's courtyard while Peter was left standing at the gate. The disciple known to the high priest came out and spoke to the woman at the gate and then brought Peter in. 
The servant girl who kept the gate said to Peter, Aren't you one of this man's followers? Not I. Now the night was cold, and the servants and the guards who were standing around had made a charcoal fire to warm themselves by. Peter joined them and stood there warming himself. The high priest questioned Jesus first about his disciples, then about his teaching. Jesus answered by saying, I have spoken publicly to any who would listen. I always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews come together. There was nothing secret about anything I said. Why do you question me? Question those who heard me when I spoke. It should be obvious they will know what I said. At this reply, one of the guards who was standing nearby gave Jesus a sharp blow on the face. Is that any way to answer the high priest? If I said anything wrong, produce the evidence. But if I spoke the truth, why do you hit me? Annas next sent him bound to the high priest Caiaphas. All through this, Simon Peter had been standing there warming himself. They said to him, Are you not a disciple of his? I am not. But did I not see you with him in the garden? One of the high priest's slaves, as it happened, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had suffer, severed, insisted. Peter denied it again. At that moment, a cock began to crow. At daybreak, they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. They did not enter the praetorium themselves, for they had to avoid ritual impurity if they were to eat the Passover supper. Pilate came out to them. What accusation do you bring against this man? If he were not a criminal, we would certainly not have handed him over to you. Why do you not take him and pass judgment on him according to your law? We may not put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said, indicating the sort of death he would die. Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Are you saying this on your own? Or have others been telling you about me? I am no Jew. It is your own people and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my subjects would be fighting to save me from being handed over to you. As it is, my kingdom is not here. So then you are a king? It is you who say that I am a king. The reason I was born... The reason why I came into the world is to testify to the truth. Anyone committed to the truth hears my voice. Truth, what does that mean? After this remark, Pilate went out again to the Jews and told them, Speaking for myself, I find no case against this man. Recall your custom whereby I release to you someone at Passover time. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? We want Barabbas, not this one. Barabbas was an insurrectionist. Pilate's next move was to take Jesus and have him scourged. The soldiers then wove a crown of thorns and fixed it on his head, throwing around his shoulders a cloak of royal purple. Repeatedly, they came up to him, slapping his face and saying, All hail, King of the Jews. Pilate went out a second time and said to the crowd, Observe what I do. I am going to bring him out to make you realize that I find no case against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, Pilate said to them, Look at the man. 
As soon as the chief priests and the temple police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him and crucify him yourselves. I find no case against this man. We have our law, and according to that law, he must die because he made himself God's son. When Pilate heard this kind of talk, he was more afraid than ever. Going back into the praetorium, he said to Jesus, Where do you come from? Jesus would not give him any answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? You would have no power over me, whatever, unless it was given to you from above. That is why he who handed me over to you is guilty of the greater sin. After this, Pilate was eager to release him, but the Jews shouted, If you free this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who makes himself a king becomes Caesar's rival. Pilate heard what they were saying, then brought Jesus outside and took a seat on the judge's bench at the place called the Stone Payment, Gabbatha in Hebrew. It was the preparation day for Passover, and the hour was about noon. He said to the Jews, Look at your king. Away with him, away with him, crucify him. What, shall I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar. In the end, Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified. Jesus was led away, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There, they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side, Jesus in the middle. Pilate had an inscription placed on the cross which read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. This inscription in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek was read by many of the Jews since the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. The chief priest of the Jews tried to tell Pilate, You should not have written King of the Jews. Write instead, This man claimed to be King of the Jews. What I have written, I have written. After the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them four ways, one for each soldier. There was also his tunic, but this tunic was woven in one piece from top to bottom and had no seam. They said to each other, We shouldn't tear it. Let's throw dice to see who gets it. The purpose of this was to have the scripture fulfilled. They divided my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. And this is what the soldiers dead. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Seeing his mother there with a disciple whom he loved, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, there is your son. In turn, he said to the disciple, There is your mother. From that hour onward, the disciple took her into his care. After that, Jesus, realizing that everything was not finished, to bring the scripture to fulfillment, said, I am thirsty. There was a jar there full of common wine. They stuck a sponge soaked in this wine on some hyssop, and raised it to his lips. When Jesus took the wine, he said, Now it is finished. Then he bowed his head and delivered over his spirit.
since it was the preparation day, the Jews did not want to have the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a solemn feast day. They asked Pilate that the legs be broken and the bodies be taken away. Accordingly, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the men crucified with Jesus, first of one, then of the other. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. One of the soldiers ran a lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. This testimony has been given by an eyewitness, and his testimony is true. He tells what he knows is true so that you may believe. These events took place for the fulfillment of Scripture. Break none of his bones. There is still another Scripture passage which says, They shall look on him whom they have pierced. Afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple of Jesus, although a secret one for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate's permission to remove Jesus' body. Pilate granted it, so they came and took the body away. Nicodemus, the man who had first come to Jesus at night, likewise came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, which weighed about a hundred pounds. They took Jesus' body, and in accordance with Jewish burial custom, bound it up in wrappings of cloth with perfumed oils. In the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because of the Jewish preparation day, they laid Jesus there, for the tomb was close at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. As a child growing up on Good Friday, my mom would say to us kids that from 12 to 3, we had to stop playing. The radio in the house was turned off, and we would need to remain as quiet as possible until 3 o'clock. Those three hours seemed endless as a child. The reason given was that that was the time that Jesus hung on the cross and died for us and for the world. To be perfectly honest with you, it's in that silence that I experience still today the experience of Good Friday. For deep within me and all of us is that faith that tells us that on this day, amongst all the days of the year, we come face to face with the mystery of God's immeasurable love for us. And just as a kid, I could barely imagine or understand so great of a love, the depth and the immensity of this love still captures me in reverence and silence and mystery. I know that Jesus did not court death. I know that Jesus did not beg for the cross. 
I know that Jesus freely accepted and embraced the cross in order to bring the piercing light of God's love into the darkest places of our humanity, into those areas of evil and suffering, those areas of fear and despair, into those areas of our own resistance and even death. We have a power greater than ourselves that will restore us. And that power is found in the cross of Jesus Christ. So as we gaze upon the cross today, as we look upon the crucifixes in our own homes, may we ponder this mystery, this great mystery. And as we look and reflect on the cross of Jesus, may we carry our own sufferings and the sufferings of our world to the Lord to place them in his loving care so that he may raise them up to the Father and raise us up to the newness of life. The cross is our path to salvation. The cross is our path to new life. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all nations. Watch over the works of your mercy, that your church, spread through all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our most holy father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord who chose him for the order of bishops may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, Look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop Salvatore, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayers for your ministers that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their most inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offsprings, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the numbers of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth. Gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty, ever-living God, who gathers what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way to salvation. Almighty ever-living God, Grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves be constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in our world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty ever-living God, who created all people to see you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of people, Look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and the freedom of religion 
may through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all those who suffer the consequences of the current pandemic, that God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, and salvation to all the victims who have died. Almighty ever-living God, only support of our human weakness, look with compassion upon the sorrowful condition of your children who suffer because of this pandemic. Relieve the pain of the sick. Give strength to those who care for them. Welcome into your peace those who have died. And throughout this time of tribulation, grant that we may all find comfort in your merciful love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty and ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strengthen of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand through Christ our Lord. Amen.
At our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name, name, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory, glory of yours, yours now, now and, forever. and forever. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
blessed are all who are called to share in this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. All you who pass this way, look and see. Forgive them, they know not what they do. All you who pass this way, look and see. Almighty ever living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the works of your mercy, that by, by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May we bow our heads for this blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.